Hi friends. If you want to check out another shadow showdown between Pop McGrath's Divine Rose and Vizial's Paris Edit, then please keep on watching. Hi, my name is Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. The response from my last shadow showdown between Arrest and Biba was very positive. And in my last Wednesday yay, Wednesday yay, yay, many of you suggested Divine Rose and the Powery edit from Vizial. These two palettes were often compared, especially when this one released. This released first back in November, and then when Paris edit came out, people were like, those shades are similar. Do I need both? And I think Divine Rose is still available and this is still available as well. So I decided why don't we go head to head with the shadows that are similar from each palette. Vizier on this side, Pat on this side, and see what we come up with. And I have reviews for each of these palettes. We'll link the video links up above and down below in the description box, as well as include all the products that I have on my face. Yes, it is the Tom Ford Trace Lipstick Foundation. How did you know? With all that said, let's dive in a little closer. That's enough. Unlike my review videos where I have you super tight in, I want to stay a little far so you can see the comparisons as we apply these shadows. Now here is Pat's Mothership 7 Divine Rose, one of her more popular curations, simply that is not as powwow bang bang as her other motherships, let's say like Bronze Seduction or even Subversive. And here we have the Paris Edit that upon first glance, they appear very similar in color story and in mood, right? Soft, rose-like, and all those elements involved in each palette, but I feel there are differences that are sometimes hard to figure out just from seeing the palette as it is. The main difference is the price. Divine Rose is gonna hit you with a whopping 125. The Paris Edit is going to be 39 and quite frankly, more travel friendly in addition to being more wallet friendly and the frame is magnetic. So if you have the other Edit palettes, you can mix and match the shadow pans as they can be taken out and switched however you like. What side I said? This is the Pat side? No, this is the Vizier side. Let's prep with our MAC Paint Pot and Soft Okay. And I gotta fix these eyebrows. Hmm. First shade I want to go in with is, hold on, I got the graph right here. Fluch. This shade reminds me very much of Veloria that exists in Divine Rose. All these freaking brushes, oh my gosh, I just, I can't find the one that I want. That's better. Kicking it off with my Hakuhodo J5 Tie 2-2. Five five two two. It was hard to get that out. Busy art mats are buildable, and I think that's why they're very popular amongst not only the pro makeup community but the beauty enthusiast community as well. Now with Veloria, I'm going in with my Isum G35. See the the tonal difference between these two. All right, Flor from the Busy art edit. I feel although it looks lavender in the pan, has a little more warmth. Here. Whereas Veloria has a little more of a lavender, almost lavender smoky tone to it. And if you can just see them both here together, I definitely detect that more smoky lavender hue from Veloria. Whereas again, this one is a little more rosy lavender. What do you guys think? I'm taking more of the floor shade with the G34. I made sure that I wiped that brush clean before going into the shadow just to build up the color a little bit more. Fantastic. Now with Ceres, Ceres, Seri. Tapping that on with my Isum S33, just on the very outer V shape of the lid. And as you know, I like to pull the shadow out just a little bit for that soft wing look. Extreme Mahogany, is this what this shade is called? I forgot. Umasonaji. Crease Pro. Tapping that now on Veloria. This shade packs a punch and I'm tapping first before I start whipping it around. So here are both shades together. You have Extreme Mahogany with Veloria, which I feel has a cooler tone across the board. With Flo and Sari, you have a little bit more warmth here. I feel that darker shade has a little more plum, whereas this has a little more of a 
a deeper brown hue. We most certainly can add more of the serif shade. Tapping more here, just so we can better see the contrast between both shades. Yeah, I think this is still more plummy in nature, whereas the Extreme Mahogany from Pat is a little more neutral brown. There's definitely plum in here as well, I feel. There's a purple tint to it, but it just appears a little more smoky. It's hard to pick a shimmer that I want to use with Love Lace. Let's see, Touré. I know I'm saying that wrong. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna whip it across the lid on the Viseart side. Beautiful shade. I am still head over heels from when I first used this shade in my review video. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. The tone I feel is so unique, very smoky, very well could be used all on its own all over the lid with any of the mattes in the palette. It's just extraordinary. And I'm taking more with my Sonyuji Soft Shader. Just now applying more in and around the crease area, pulling a little more of the first matte we applied in towards the most medial part of the eye. <laughs> I didn't want to say inner again, so I said medial. It's an anatomical term. Hey, Chelsea. Okay. Okay, okay. We could go in with Rose Dusk, but I want to go in with Lovelace to see how that contrasts. And just from that swatch alone, Lovelace is going to appear, I feel, more almost silvery lavender than this shade. I'm gonna tap that round. Same thing like I did with the Viseart side, but now with Veloria. Just brushing a little more in. Taking a little more Veloria with the brush. This is my Wayne Goss number seven. I knew it, I knew it. For the inner corner, we could go in with this shade. That's like a, a beautifully, it's a peachy champagne. Really nice. From here, we could go in with VR Rose Nectar. I believe that's the VR some VR. Why not? I know I can go in with Skin Show Nude, Skin Nude Glow, Skin Show something, but I figured maybe we'll go in with the Duochrome since this reminds me of that shade. So because there's a shift to it, this just shows more peach champagne, whereas this has a little more going on. To finish both eye looks, now going in with the respective matte shades that we started each look with. This is my refer number 13. Just whipping it around, cool. I'm wiping between uses so we could get a clear picture of what each palette has to offer. Using the same inner corner highlight I use for both eyes, but just now pulling it more under the lash line. All right, friends, let's slap on some lashes and I'll be right back. Here's a tighter shot of both looks so you can see how the shadows appear in comparison to one another. On the lashes, I have Ardell Wispies in the style 700. Here again is the Pat Divine Rose side. I feel like I'm getting a little more smoke, a little more intensity, especially with Extreme Mahogany on the outer corner. And here is the Viseart Paris Edit side. I'm getting smokiness as well. They just seems to be a tinge more of a plummy warmth present on this side. And then here between the colors on the lid, you can see the Love Lace offers up a more silvery lavender feel, whereas the shade here, dare I say, reminds me of Rose Dusk from Divine Rose, but I feel Rose Dusk is a little more pinky red tone, and this still is very much plummy in tone. And here's a wide shot of the look, if you can even believe it. And one of our squad members was so nice to send me an Hermes lipstick. Girl, I'm looking at you. I love you so much. She gifted this to me. It is the, the Rouge Hermes Beige Naturel in 11. It's very pinky, but it works. I have it with the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic shade in her lip cheats, so I think this is a great combination. Any pinky nude that you have might work with either the Paris Edit or the Divine Rose, but it's hard to find a pinky shade that doesn't make me look like 
ooh, maybe you should take that off. But because of the tones we got going on the eyes, this, this works, it works. So let me know what you think down below, friends, in terms of the comparisons, what you think. From these shades, the outer corner shades, I will say if you are deeper complected, you might get more depth from Extreme Mahogany than you would from Seri, Ceris. This is a beautiful shade, and I'm sure you very much can build it up, absolutely. I feel you might get more depth if you have the Viseart Milieu palette, which has beautifully rich chocolate brown shades in that 12 pan palette. And if you happen to have that and the Paris edit, you might have to dip out so you could create a little more smoky depth on the outer corner if that's the route you want to go. But if you're deciding between the two and you want the deeper shade, I feel that exists in Extreme Mahogany. So why don't we dive back in, see what else we could come up with and I'll see you back here in a minute. Now the standout color from the Viseart Paris edit that I know for sure does not exist in Divine Rose is this shade here. It is called Saint Germain. It is a lavender, I thought it was blue, but it's a very steely looking lavender shade, even more steely than Lovelace. And then this shade here might look like rose dust and there's not really like a bronzy moment like there is in Divine Rose in Sable Bronze. And the only masks that exist in Divine Rose are Veloria and Extreme Mahogany, whereas you have, with the exception of this one, it has little sh little sparkles in the matte base. You're looking at, even with that included, five mattes, whereas Divine Rose only has two. I don't know what to do. Let's go in with this shade. Let's go in with the tanny shade from Paris Edit. That's creme brulee with my G34. And as you see, we're looking at a good neutral tan moment. And this definitely you're not gonna get in Divine Rose. We go in with Sable Bronze as the matte shade. I spoke about this in my Divine Rose uh, multi-look video where this texture, although not a traditional matte, very well can be treated as a matte. So if you were frustrated with the fact that you didn't have more than two mattes in Divine Rose, you could go in with Sable Bronze as like your crease shade to have that neutral moment. But even there, you can see that this is a little more tan, softer in hue. Sable Bronze is a different texture altogether, right? It's a metallic shade, it is not a matte. But if you want more of a neutral moment, in addition to the lavender from Veloria and that smoke from Extreme Mahogany, you can get it from Sable Bronze. But even so, Sable Bronze is deeper in hue, it's definitely more bronzy, whereas this is more like the name implies, creme brulee. Let's go in with this shade here. I think it's pronounced Mahai. M-A-R-A-I-S. Help me down below. And that's really beautiful on the lid. I think this is a great daily uh, eye idea from the Viseart Edit palette. Now, home Rose Dusk VR. This shade is not in Divine Rose. Is is not in there. But let's go in with VR because this is gonna give a different feel altogether. It just, it looks, it looks gold on camera, but there is definitely a flip to it. You can see it go from pink to yellow. And it was hard to see, but basically the pink shift that you see here is like the actual color that you have on the Viseart side. I'm just adding a little more sable bronze to combine everything. What we can do, we could add a little bit of rose dusk. Tapping that with my refer number one brush between where VR starts and the sable bronze ends. Bump you up a little bit. Ooh, that's too light. Is that too light? I don't know. I'll see in the footage. I'll have regrets later. Because this is Rose Dusk from Divine Rose. And the shade we applied on the Viseart side has a little more pink. So you see this is a little more red, a little more rich in tone, and this is a little more pink. And right off the bat, I mean, these are two different looks all together. I'm gonna cut down the exposure because I feel you can't see the shades very well. So that's the Divine Rose side, and this is the Viseart side. Taking this shade here, this is with my Hakuhodo Holiday 2019 like mini fan brush. It's such a fun brush to use. I don't use this often enough, and I should, 
look at it it's like a little it's like a mini fan they do have these on the hakuhoro site of course this is the limited edition red painted handle but they still have this eyeshadow brush on the site this is a fun little addition definitely going in with the skin show skin nude skin glow shade from divine rose on this side for the Iniquana. and now let's go in with this shade from the Viseart palette tapping that on i think that has a little more champagne the skin show is a little more cooler and undertone i feel from pat's side creme brulee here on the lower lash line sable bronze here on this lower lash line and i'm going in with rose dusk here as well and that sparkly pretty shade we apply with that fan eyeshadow brush here on the inner lower lash line all right let's slap on some lashes and i'll be right back and here is a close-up shot of both looks on the lashes i have the same ardell wispies in the style 700 and here actually slapped on a little bit of astral solstice on the inner corner with my pinky to give it a little more sparkle but you can see how the sable bronze shade kind of lends that neutral moment through the crease although it is not a matte but that's the route you need to take if you want something like this from divine rose and from the Viseart paris edit we have the creme brulee matte excuse, excuse these lashes i'm so sorry but then this beautiful pinky shimmer shade and of course we have the vr rose nectar on the lid but i think these are different i know they have similar feel in terms of the rosy pinky peachy and then the neutral across the crease i understand the mood might be similar but the colors are different you know what i'm saying and on the lips i have the menta cosmetics brand nude lip liner and semi matte duo in brand nude and on the center of the lips i have the mel cosmetics lipstick in 1969. i have to say i love both looks i mean i love the fact that divine rose has the astral shade now i know our girl teresa is dead reviewed this she has very sensitive eyes and i wanted to let you know if you have sensitive eyes as well then this glitter texture is not going to work for you it's going to burn your skin it might cause severe irritation and inflammation on your eyelids so just keep that in mind if you don't have either palette that might be the deciding factor for you and for viseart paris edit I do feel that you get more punch from the shimmer and metallic shades from Divine Rose, but you get a limited range of color. You're only getting two mattes in here. Everything else is either shimmer, metallic, or the glitter topper shade. Oh, I forgot about, we got iridescent pink. Forgot about the iridescent pink. I'm so sorry. Unfortunately, I have to end my video here because I have another task that I need to tend to right now. I hope these looks, though, were enough to help you decide which palette will suit you better. If you have both, great. You can mix and match as you like. If you are deciding between the two, again, I feel the more practical choice would be the Viseart Edit simply because of the size, the price, and you're getting 12 shades which isn't bad at all and again a nice array of matte and shimmer finishes and a beautiful range of shades for each texture with divine rose this is more of an experience right you have the huge eyeshadow case and you have, although 10 shadows, you have an array of textures in here. And like I said, in the first set of looks, Extreme Mahogany is gonna give you a lot more depth than the plummy brown shade Cerise in the Paris edit will. And then again, I feel these textures in Divine Rose are smooth enough that you can mix and match with. You could apply even VR Rose that shade through your crease is smooth enough to do that with even rose dusk and again sable bronze as you saw now the iridescent pink is like a dual chrome it has like a light pink flip to it that does not exist anywhere in the paris edit nor does something like astral solstice appears in the paris edit the only dual chromey like if is it even in here i don't know if it is i feel this shade we didn't use in this demo has like an interesting color to it. I feel there is like a flip in here. There's something going on. It's like a pinky lavender type of hue that maybe if we quickly swatch next to Lovelace, cause Lovelace is more of like a standalone shade. <laughs> Sorry about my paper cut. Ooh, Lovelace looks warmer next to that Viseart Paris edit shade. So 
this all comes down to the shades that align with you more, that vibe with you more. What's your budget? If you feel like Divine Rose is too expensive and not worth it, then fine. You don't buy it and you get Paris Edit instead if you really love those types of shades. Or you buy neither, friends. You can also do that as well. But I often get asked the differences and the similarities between these two specifically, and I thought it would be helpful just to put them in action, get the shadows on the lids, and see how they look all together in one look. Let me know, friends, what you think down below, the similarities, the differences. I really loved your input from the Rust and Biba comparison video. And also tell me which palettes you have or palettes you're planning to get. And until then, friends, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another review, tutorial, shadow showdown, get ready with me, Wednesday yay or Friday night chit chats. Take care and I'll see you again soon.